All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm going to be trying to answer the question of do you need RAID on your Synology, your free NAS, or any other storage that you've got that uses RAID? And so for this video, I'm going to butcher the definition a little bit, but I'm going to be defining RAID as basically that redundant, having at least one disk of redundant. So I'm not going to be including things like RAID 0, which do not have any kind of disk redundancy, though most certainly are RAID. We're just going to skin over those definitions right now. And so while I would love to be able to tell everybody, hey, everybody needs two disks of redundancy on any drives they've got. That way you know you'll never have any data fail. In reality, people can't afford that. And so really it's all about balancing three things, risk, cost, and total storage. And so that's what we're gonna be trying to talk about here. And so the answer also really differs based off of how many drives you have. So for example, if you have something like a two bay NAS, if you wanna use a redundant RAID on that, it's gotta be RAID one, which means you're losing half of your available storage. And depending on what you need, that is a lot of storage that you are losing. But if you have something like an eight bay Synology DS1819 plus like I've got, RAID is a lot easier of a sell. Because if you did RAID five, you'd only be losing about 12% of your available capacity, which is a lot easier of a sell for that redundancy than it is for somebody who's going to lose half their storage to RAID. The next question is, what data is on there? And so if it's just a bunch of movies you've downloaded and a bunch of stuff you're just kind of hoarding and it's nice to have, but realistically, if you needed to, you could get it back, maybe you don't need RAID on that. Maybe it's okay that there's a 10% chance that all that data is lost. And it's kind of hard to get a figure here, but let's just give it a 10% chance per year that the drive fails. That is going to be pretty aggressive, but if you can say to yourself, Okay, every year there's a 10% chance that drive fails and all the data is lost. And if I'm okay accepting that because I can easily get everything back, well maybe then you don't need RAID. Another big question then is, how good are your backups? Do you have backups? Let's be honest here, a lot of people do not have backups. And quite frankly, a redundant disk is not a backup. It helps add redundancy and it makes your data slightly more secure. But if your entire RAID crashes or your house burns down, that's not gonna help you at all. And so having that extra drive of fault tolerance, so you can say, okay, well, at least if one drive fails, I probably won't lose all my data. And then I'm willing to take the risk on the rest of the data for something like fire or theft. Well, then maybe it's a good thing for peace of mind where you can add in maybe an extra 12% of the cost to get that extra drive in there to make it RAID 5 from RAID 0 for something like an eight bay NAS. That way you have that extra peace of mind while also not giving up too much. Though I would highly recommend make sure to have at least those critical files backed up somehow. You can get dirt cheap storage based off of Backblaze, Synology C2, AWS. You can all get these things really cheap and just have them somewhere else. That way if something does happen, okay, a lot of your data, it sucks that it's gone, but it's not the end of the world, but you really wanna make sure those critical, critical files are backed up. And normally it'll be like 50 cents a month if you've got 100 gigs. So it's really not that big of a price point. And I think it's worth it for most people to have that peace of mind. I certainly have an extra backup for all my family photos just because it would suck if those were gone. And that way I always know that they're there even if my Raspberry Pi offsite backup fails and I don't know about it. So another thing you really need to factor into this is what file system are you using for this? If you're using something like ZFS or BTRFS, both these file systems actually use the redundant information to have self-healing data. So if something happens and a bit on one of the hard drives flips, it will actually be able to look at all the parity math and be able to try to figure out which bit flipped and flip it back, all without you having to do anything. And so a lot of that stuff is really valuable, having that extra disk of redundancy, which can help keep your files from getting corrupt. And so that's one big thing to factor in. So the next biggest question you've got is, how quickly can you restore your backups? And how bad is it that it takes that amount of time? And so say you're a video production house and you've got a Synology NAS that you're using as an active file server for all the video files. This is a really common setup for businesses. How big of a deal is it gonna be if one drive fails and all of a sudden that server is down and it might take you a week and a half to get it back up from backups? That's actually one of the most important things about RAID is it was actually originally designed with the intent for it just for uptime. It was never intended to be a backup. It was designed for enterprise users who one, need really fast, really large storage volumes, and two, will always have backups, 
well, should always have backups. I've heard some horror stories from huge companies having backups failing and then having no idea. And so RAID was never intended to be used as a backup. Instead, it was intended to be used to make sure that the server keeps running and so they wouldn't have to restore from backups because if you have to restore from backups, that means downtimes nine times out of 10, unless you're really good. So by having those extra one or two drives of redundancy, it can really help limit your probability of having downtime. All right, and so now I hope that has overall helped answer the question of whether or not you need a drive of redundancy. And now in this end, I'm gonna talk about RAID 5 versus 6 slash RAID Z1 versus RAID Z2. And so basically what we're talking here are extra drives in the parity. And so that gives you additional fault tolerance. The thing that has happened is hard drives have gotten absolutely massive. There are talk of 20 terabyte drives being released just this year. And that is so much data on there. Then if you had a pool of eight of those, imagine how long those restore times are going to be. It is going to be so long and it's very hard on the drives because it's a ton of random reads that you have an actually pretty decent probability that one of the drives fails as the next one's being rebuilt. And so if that were to happen, the entire thing would be lost. That's why RAID 6 came along, which is very similar to RAID Z2. The RAID Z2 is a little bit different for ZFS, but RAID 6 is designed for that extra level of caution. And they even have RAID 7, though it starts getting really slow. The upgrade from RAID 5 to RAID 6 also actually has a pretty decent write penalty because the parity math actually gets a little bit more complex going from RAID 5 to RAID 6 to account for two different failed drives. But having those extra two drives for parity actually really makes BitRot a lot less likely on both ZFS and BTRFS because now you have essentially three different ways to get the data and so you can guarantee that you can figure out what the actual bit should have been while RAID 5 will give it to you, it just could be wrong. It's highly unlikely, but it could be wrong. With RAID 6, there's virtually no chance because it's direct. So when to use RAID 5 versus RAID 6 really comes down to the same question of whether or not to use RAID. Well, I have a redundant drive. It does have a performance impact just for write speeds, but if uptime is critical, you really need it for anything over probably eight bays. Once you start getting past that, the probability that two will fail starts to become a more and more real thing. And as drives get bigger, it becomes more and more likely that one drive will fail as it's being rebuilt, meaning you will lose the entire thing. And so that's just one thing to think about, though it obviously does matter based off of your exact use case. And so that's actually why ZFS has VDEVs. Basically, you have a RAID 5 or 6 configuration, RAID Z1 or Z2 or Z3, and you have a bunch of those together, meaning that if one drive fails, you only have to replace it in that section and it's rebuilt from that single VDEV. That means you have more redundancy spread out further without having to do a lot more complex parity math. And it allows you to have literally petabyte scales on a file system, which is absolutely insane. All right, well, I hope this was helpful on whether or not you need RAID for your NAS. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.